Ambrosia from 1951. So mid-century America has produced many suspect salads, many of which continue to leak out of the angsty states of Wisconsin and Minnesota. However, Ambrosia is arguably the one that started them all, the pioneer, if you will, and today we're gonna see if that's a good thing. Start by draining a pound and a half of mandarin oranges, pound of maraschino cherries, and 20 ounces of pineapple. Time for a cup and a third of cream whipped. Keep in mind, this is a salad. <laughs> I like to whip cream by hand. It's a lot more intimate. Now in goes a half cup of sour cream and a half cup of coconut. Chop the cherries and a cup of walnuts. Sure. Walnuts aren't my favorite, but I've been known to never turn down a nut. Mm. In goes the cherries. Pineapple. Mix. Just like me, the mandarin oranges are a delicate fruit, so they go in last. You know, this actually looks pretty good. To the fridge. Once you're ready to serve, you fold in two cups of marshmallows. To the salad. This has to be the most 50s thing ever. Mmm. <laughs> you know what? I like this one. It's quite pleasant. Anzac biscuits from the Great War. In Australia and New Zealand, this recipe is actually protected by law. Bake it wrong. To jail! I mean, not really, but you wouldn't want to get them angry. They have kangaroos. One cup of oats! I love oats. They taste like grandparents. I mean, they don't taste like- You know what I mean! One cup of flour! Then one cup of desiccated coconut. Not shredded, not sweetened, I'm talking dried flakes! Gonna need some head and shoulders for that. Three quarters of a cup of sugar. Now into a saucepan goes ten tablespoons of butter. I did have to convert this entire recipe from grams into freedom units. Then a quarter cup of golden syrup. <laughs> Once the butter melts, we remove and add a teaspoon of baking soda. This is weird. Mm, it's foamy. Mm, mix. 350 for 12 minutes. Oh, boy, howdy. Crispy but chewy. Good biscuit. Apple cider cookies from 1973. Yes, we humans have been baking with apples since the first time somebody baked with an apple. And today we're gonna be continuing that tradition. Start with three quarters of a cup of butter. That's a lot of butter, Miss Pillsbury. One cup of brown sugar. Half cup of sugar. Sugar. Full disclosure, I picked this recipe because it looked good. I don't always like to destroy my taste buds, you know. Butter go burr. One egg. Now for two cups of flour. Pinch of salt. Teaspoon of floof soda. That's baking soda. And apple pie spice. What's apple pie spice? Let me tell you. Half teaspoon of nutmeg, allspice, ground ginger, ground cardamom, and two teaspoons of simonium. Oh dear. It's gonna be a little simonium heavy. <laughs> now we finally chop an apple of our choosing. I chose this one to die. <laughs> Quarter cup of apple cider. <laughs> Get in. It's not November yet, so we're cleared for some optional nuts. <laughs> Mix. Chill time. Boop. 350 for about 17 minutes. Hello, little one. It's time for icing. Three tablespoons of melted butter. Third of a cup of cider. Then we add powdered sugar until it's thick. <laughs> oh. oh yes, you will love these. They are the taste of the season. Avocado bread from 73. Yes, it seems that before millennials discovered avocado on toast, their forefathers wanted to skip a few steps and just put the avocado directly in the bread. We're gonna see if they were onto something. Of course, they were onto a lot of things back then. We begin with two very ripe avocados. Time to open you up. Good morning. <laughs> Now in goes three quarters of a cup of sugar. So the avocado is the only source of fat in this recipe, so instead of creaming sugar into butter, we're just creaming the fruit, which is something I happen to be familiar with. <laughs> Time for three, oh, hmm, well, three eggs. Beat thoroughly. For the dry ingredients, we mix together two cups of flour with one and a half teaspoons of floof powder. That's baking powder. <laughs> Combine the two, fold, in you go. We seem to be baking guacamole. 350 for about 45 to 50 minutes. Whoa, look at how good it looks. Woo! <laughs> no way. Woo! This tastes amazing. I'm so confused. Because there's no butter, there's no oil, there's no milk, just fruit. Avocado ice cream from 1947. This is fascinating because it seems chronologically wrong to find this in a 1940s cookbook, which means it must be pretty special or that time-traveling keto athleisure influencers exist. You know, people who follow strange concepts like exercise. Into a saucepan goes a half cup of sugar, a pinch of salt, and two cups of milk. Moon juice! Now we scald this, so bring it to a simmer, but not a boil. Fire! <laughs> Into a separate bowl goes two eggies. Beat. While whisking, we cook the eggs by slowly pouring in the hot milk. In goes a cup of heavy cream and two avocados mashed. I'm going to force mine through a sieve. And finally, the juice of a lemon. Beat thoroughly. And just freeze until firm. Good morning. Am I really about to have ice cream for breakfast? It's destiny. Ooh.
Whoa, yes, that that works. It's really quite nice. It is a bit icy, more of a sherbet, but it's a no churn, so I can't complain. It is a lovely, delicate taste. An avocado pie from 66. Graham cracker crust. Five tablespoons of melted Paula Deen. Unsalted. She must be in a good mood today. Dash of sugar. I don't know how big your dash is. <laughs> Remember the edges, Dylan. The edges! Blind bake the shell for 15. <laughs> Avocados. Three. Ooh, it's a boy. Delicious. Howdy. Cream cheese. Sweetened condensed milk. This is from 1938. It's only electrocuted me twice. Woo! Yes, sir! You need the juice of two limes! Woo! <laughs> Smells like the war. La, la, la. Chill time! Good morning! Hmm. Hmm. You know what? This is doing something for me. It's rather eccentric, but very smooth and quite light. That right there is a summer pie. A bean pie from the 1920s. Beans, you heard me. Now these took a long bath last night. Good night. Good morning. Time to cook them. Fire! Pastry! Gotta use your fingies. <laughs> Thank you for cooperating today. Ah! Bean Rebellion! Two cups of flour! Yummy, yummy! Simon Yam! Mo juice! Eggy! How many? I don't know. It just says eggs! Sugar! Oh dear. Eh. Four! <laughs> Did you just kill my blender? Hello? <laughs> This is personal now. You swung first! <laughs> Checkmate! Looks horrifying. Let's slow down for a bit. Nothing makes sense anymore. Why are you good? You have a bag of beans in you! A carrot pie from 1919. Before pumpkin pie became king, people ate this. Now they're dead. Pound of carrots! Reloading! I just love this. Water! Fire! Time for pastry! Welcome to the world. It's awful. Get in, please. Get in the pan. Get in! Mood juice! Only a half cup of sugar. It's time for some eggy finger! Simonim! Time's up! Uh. Combine all ingredients except for pie shell. Were you really worried that I was gonna mix in a fully constructed pie shell into this? I'm a fool, not an idiot. This is frighteningly liquid! Who are you? Hmm. Fascinating. Hold on! It's a pumpkin pie imposter. Bit chewier, but elsewise lovely. A chocolate beet cake from 66. Now look, I'm no stranger to cakes with bizarre ingredients, but I think the use of pickled beets is the most unorthodox. We start by blending our 15 ounce can of pickled beets. Juice and all, honey. <laughs> There seems to have been a murder. Now into a bowl goes a half cup of vegetable oil, one and a half cups of sugar, a bit of nina, three eggies. Whisk vigorously. In go the beets. Oh, it's pink. For the dry ingredients, we need two cups of flour, third of a cup of cocoa, pinch of salt, and a teaspoon of baking soda. But there's no acid. Oh, the beets! They might be onto something. Get in, fold. Oh, it's like velvet. About 50 minutes at 375. Ooh. Mm. For the ganache, we need a half cup of cream and four ounces of chocolate over very low heat. Fire! Just until the chocolate melts and everything is smooth. Oh my. <laughs> Son of a- It's fantastic! Beats! What's next? A chocolate mayonnaise cake from 56. This has been my most requested cake. Of course it's the mayonnaise! Flour! Sugar! Floofers! Today you will rise! Potted cocoa! Why she smells like chocolate? Mayonnaise! And it's not just a little bit. No, no, it's a severe, unauthorized cup of mayonnaise. Cup of water. Honey, you can't dilute a war crime. You know, it's horrible now, but I hope it turns out okay. Like children. I'm sending you to summer camp. <laughs> For the frosting, we boil milk, sugar, cocoa, and margarine. Fire! Beat in mayonnaise to the chocolate. Do you keep it in your purse? Hello. Maybe if I just don't think about it. Good heavens. Holy fuck. Fantastically moist. The chocolate is tangy. I'll concede you were right. A chocolate sauerkraut cake from 48. Thought this was a joke. Turns out I'm the joke. Sauerkraut. A whole cup. Soak in water and then drain. Better. One and a half cups of sugar. Cream time. You can use a mixer. I just do this to feel something. Eggies three. Flour. Half cup of cuckoo. Baking powder. Mmm. Water. Yum. Fold in sauerkraut carefully. Or what? I'm gonna ruin your disaster? Can a cake be tried for treason? In she go- I know it's open! Sleep tight. Wow. Bring buttercream and chocolate to a boil. Fire! <laughs> Okay. Mm. 
No. Incredible. It feels like coconut. I don't taste sauerkraut. Either chocolate fixes everything or this is alchemy. Chocolate zucchini bread from 1968. Now when I think of zucchini, I think of good barbecue, summer salads. Men, just not dessert. But we start such a dessert with a cup of flour, half cup of cuckoo, chocolate bite, and a teaspoon of floof soda. Now we melt a quarter cup of margarine. Beep. A quarter cup of an oil of my choosing. I'm guessing 10W30 wouldn't work. Cup of brown sugar. Two eggy. For the zucchini, we need one and a half cups shredded, skin and all. I hate zucchini. Doesn't taste bad, it just makes me feel insufficient. Wet, dry, meh. This isn't just a chocolate cake recipe with a bit of zucchini. No, this has more zucchini than flour. 50 minutes at 350. Goodness gracious, cease and desist! Come on. It's really quite brilliant. It deepens the chocolate, keeps it nice and moist. I don't make the rules. A chocolate potato cake from 1912. This is why we don't perform lobotomies anymore. Boil a potato. Did I mention this was a cake? Skins stay on, unlike Americans. Fire! Cream the butter. Can we at least have coffee first? Butter go boom! Should be a pale white. Eggy! Wakey wakey! Who's tough now? Moo juice! Bloop! Zimmonim! Chocolate. I bet this recipe is just all the wrong answers on a baking test. Mm -hmm. it smells like dentures. Go away. Goodbye. For the icing, we boil butter, sugar, milk, and chocolate. My time has come. Not bad, dead people. All right. <laughs> You're not supposed to work! It's incredible, and I'm mad about it. Christmas crack from the 70s. Now, if it weren't already obvious by the name, this recipe hails from the USA, where it is a Christmas staple. They do things differently around here. We start with a whole sleeve of saltine crackers. I'm guessing that's where the name comes from, which is disappointing. We line these up flat over some good foil. Now into a saucepan goes one cup of butter and one cup of brown sugar. Fire! We're boiling for five minutes. Bubble, bubble. Now we pour this over the crackers. Mm, with the saltine. Oh dear. Then 350 for seven minutes. As soon as these come out of the oven, we top with a whole bag of chalky chips. <laughs> then spread. Ooh, I see what you're working with. Then you can top this with whatever you want. I'm gonna use walnuts. <laughs> to the fridge. Done. Hello. And now we crack the sheet. <laughs> the name is making a lot more sense now. Hmm. Ooh, mmm. My goodness. <laughs> America, you've done it again. This is fantastic. The Christmas Fruitcake from 1900. So I've never made a fruitcake, but if you're anything like me, you are one. <laughs> Start with one and a half cups of butter and three cups of brown sugar. <laughs> half cup of treacle and six eggs. How big is this cake? Four and a half cups of flour, nutmeg, cloves, allspice, cinnamon, plus one and a half teaspoons of fluff powder. Get him! I present to you the fruit. The mix is eight ounces each of candied orange peel, pineapple, cherries, dried figs, currants, dates, raisins, all soaked in an obscene amount of brandy. Look away, kids. Ooh, that hurts. <laughs> It's been festering for a few days. Three cups of walnuts. This is ridiculous. A lot of fruit, brandy, and nuts. Sounds like a good weekend. 300 for two hours. Done. Now time for a cheesecloth and more brandy. <laughs> well, there goes that. And now we just wait. <laughs> Ooh. I feel like I'm exhuming a body. Hello. Mm. Well, it's very moist and very potent. Don't feed too much to Grandpa. He won't make it down the stairs. Love it or hate it, it's the taste of Christmas. And that's quite fine by me. Coconut ice from 61. Now, it's come to my attention that a lot of Americans don't like coconut. And you know what? It's okay to be wrong. But this here is an old school British candy, which looks too simple to be good. We begin with a 15 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. Half of it goes in one bowl, the other half in another. Then into each bowl goes a cup of powdered sugar. My sweet tooth is tingling. Mix. Then we dye one bowl pink by using a few drops of red food coloring. Boop. You know, as a kid, I've always loved pink, which was the first of many signs. And a little bit of nilla. nilla. Finally, to each bowl goes two cups of coconut flakes. Don't use sweetened. <laughs> you will kill somebody. One, two. Then to an eight inch parchment lined pan goes the first layer. <laughs> Gotta pack it tight. Then the second. <laughs> this is fun. And that's it. Pop it in the fridge for at least three hours to set. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh my goodness. These are just lovely. What do you think? There's no ice in these. <laughs> 
the perfect summer candy. Copycat Almond Joys from 1953. Yes, copycat recipes are nothing new, and neither are Almond Joys. In fact, one Mrs. Kirk from Montgomery, Alabama loved them so much, she wanted to make them herself. Let's go, honey. We start with an entire 14-ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. To which we add two cups of powdered sugar. Uh, mix. Then comes four cups of unsweetened coconut. That, that's a lot. Come on! Then press it into a large parchment-lined pan. I'm using a 13 by 9 inch, but you could use anything similar, like a casserole dish. <laughs> Once everything's flat and even, you're gonna need some almonds. You just line them up and press them in. <laughs> This is so satisfying. Now this goes to the fridge, preferably overnight. It just needs to be really hard. Ooh, cut. Ooh. Yes. Now four cups of chocolate and two teaspoons of shortening or coconut oil. Melting over a double boiler. Fire! Then dip and cover. Hello! Done! Let them set. <laughs> mm -hmm. On the money. Mm, look at that. We did that. Mrs. Kirk, you're my hero. Corn cookies from 1930. Now, if cornmeal were to end up in my sugar cookie dough, I would consider that a mistake. But these people have done it on purpose. Do you know what that's called? Criminal intent. You begin by creaming a half cup of margarine with a half cup of sugar. They say using softened margarine is ideal. No, honey, what's ideal is not using margarine. One egg cake. So far, so good. And then came the cornmeal. Cornmeal in a sugar cookie. What a bright idea. Oh, cornmeal on the floor. I'm going to start needing blood pressure medication. Three quarters of a cup and half a cup of flour. Mixed. Now we form a log. Come on. Be a good corn log to the icebox. You are frozen. And now we roll it in cornmeal. <laughs> Cookies. Eight minutes at 375. Huh? Whoa. This is lovely. It's a sugar cookie with a bachelor's degree. Bravo. Cornstarch cookies from 1919. These go by many names, like starchies, meltaways, and in Brazil where they originate, sequilus. But they're one of the OG gluten-free three-ingredient cookies. We start with a half cup of sweetened condensed milk, followed by a half cup of soft butter. Beat vigorously. Then using the handle of a spoon, we slowly stir in two cups of cornstarch. What precisely does this accomplish? Trust the process. Hmm. This is a strange trifecta of ingredients. I'm intrigued. Now we bake in a slow oven for 15 to 20 minutes. We'll do 325 Fahrenheit. Perfect. These are so cute. Well, you know, in a world of similar cookies, these are something quite special. They're like a cloud of joy. Incredibly unique. Hmm. Chocolate Cottage Cheese Cookies from 1955. This was given to me by my friend Shelby. It's called Quick Dishes for the Woman in a Hurry. In a hurry to take a dump. We start with a cup of margarine. It's like butter, but terrible. Two cups of sugar. Now we beat. That tracks for the 50s. Two eggies. Then an entire cup of cottage cheese. I hate cottage cheese. It looks like it's listening to me. Chunky. For dry ingredients, we need three cups of flour. A teaspoon of floof powder and a half teaspoon of floof soda. Half cup of cocoa. Get in! Finish with nuts. Don't have to ask me twice. Mix! Ten minutes, 3.50. Hello. Oh. Now that's just a good cookie. It is distinctly different, but good. Cowboy Cookies from 65. Now I'm familiar with cookies and I'm quite familiar with cowboys. I went to the University of Wyoming. Go Pokes! So let's bake their cookies. We start by toasting a cup of coconut, cup of pecans, and two cups of rolled oats. What? I've never thought to toast oats. Eight minutes at 350. Next we have a cup of butter, cup of brown sugar, and a cup of sugar. Sugar. This recipe is so even. How nice. Cream. <laughs> Nilla. And two eggies. Mixy mix. Oh, toasty. For the dry ingredients, we have two cups of flour and a mere teaspoon of baking soda. Fold. In goes all of the toasties. <laughs> Plus two cups of chalky chips. <laughs> so much stuff. Cause the Western folks all know. About 11 minutes at 3.50. <laughs> These are highfalutin. Mm. Hold on. Good? Very. A date cream from 55. Now, if you've never had a date before, I'm sorry. You must be very lonely. But this is what they look like, and now you're looking at two fruits. We need one cup chopped. Very sticky. And this, gentlemen, is what happens when we get old. Cup of sugar. Quarter cup of cornstarch. Quarter cup of moo juice. What are we making, glue? Two cups of scalded milk. Ha! Mm. Boil vigorously. Mm. Now we cook for 10 minutes over a double boiler. No clue. I've never made a date cream before. I've never cooked a date cream before. The yolks of three eggies. Temper first. Get in. Mix. 
Cool it down with three tablespoons of butter. The dates. Nina. To the fridge. Good evening. It's dark. This is solid. Hello? Whoa. Whoa. What? This is blowing my mind. This tastes amazing. But I am more astounded as to how we ended up with ice cream in the fridge. Deep fried cookie dough from 71. It's known that here in America, they'll deep fry anything that isn't bolted to the earth, including zucchinis, hot dogs, and several species of large bird. To a half cup of butter, we add two thirds of a cup of sugar. You come into my house. One and one third cup flour. And a cup of chalky chips. Mix. There's no floofers. They don't bake these. They'll go be flatter than my butt. Chill time. Now for the batter, we need a cup and a quarter of flour. A teaspoon of floof powder. Quarter cup of sugar. One cup of moo juice. Then a tablespoon of vegetable oil. You don't want any lumps. I fry with peanut oil because it's correct. Are you ready to die? Yeah, me too. One, two, three. Mm, man, this looks incredible. This is perfection. I don't know what else you want me to say. Whoopsie, they're gone. Eggnog from 1895. So eggnog is already one of my favorite things, but homemade is supposedly 10 times better. Oh my gosh, by golly. We start with the yolks of five eggs. Save the whites. Then we whisking sugar. Doesn't tell me how much, so I'm gonna use a cup. It's Christmas. Yes, I will be calling this eggnog. Now we add two cups of moo juice and one cup of heavy cream to a cauldron. Sorry, my cauldron's in the dishwasher. Seven him for cloves. Fire! We're scalding, not boiling. Then we temper the eggs with about half of this mixture. And then back you go. Low heat until thick. Done. Strain it. Not today, cloves. Egg whites. Come on. Time for mixing. Mm. Just a touch of sugar. Fold that meg. Now, if you're not comfortable with raw egg whites, you can heat this whole mixture back up, but it won't be as fluffy. To the fridge. Oh, it's thick. More nutmeg. Oh dear. This has ruined all other eggnog. Delicious. It's life changing. It's Christmas. A fake apple pie from the Great Depression. This recipe was sent to me by Herbert Hoover Feet Picks. Something for everybody. Instead of apples, this recipe uses Ritz crackers. Sugar! Water! Fire! Stir until disgusting. Crap time! Oh, you crafty. <laughs> Are you nine inches yet? Said 15 year old me. Lemon juice. I wish. 40 Ritz crackers. Ugh. What am I supposed to expect? Ugh. Suppose it's better than eating your offspring. Do I call the police or a priest? A priest. Honey, there's been an accident. Make it 430. I'm bleeding. Oh boy. Whoa. <laughs> it tastes like apples. We found the first good one. Fried crackers from the Great Depression. These are also called cracker flitters. What is a flitter? I don't know. Nobody knows. We begin with two sleeves of saltines. America's favorite sawdust squares. Cover and soak these with water. Mm. Granny's favorite soggy crackers. Mm. Now we squeeze and drain it. Mm. Ooh. Just imagine cooking this and trying to tell yourself that everything is okay. One eggy. Now we heat up a skillet with what? A suitable amount of lard. There is no suitable amount of lard. Never has been, never will be. Fire! And then we just... Yeah. Try not to die. How long does sadness take to cook? Ooh. And finally, we douse in maple syrup. That is surprisingly good. Seriously, give this a try. You don't have to use lard, though. Ginger nuts from 1906. Now, I've never seen a ginger nut, but I assume it's roughly the same as a blonde or a brunette. Fittingly, these nuts begin with a good pound of flour, pinch of salt, three ounces of sugar, teaspoon of soda, and half an ounce of ginger. Woo! You're gonna be spicy. Now, to a saucepan, we add four ounces of butter, plus half a pound of any treacle. I would call that excessive. Fire! Once the butter is melted, we add half a gill of milk. What is a gill? <coughs> a gill is 32 fluid drams. Well, thank God for that. When has the Avoir Dupois system helped anybody? We need a quarter cup. Moon juice! In we go! Mix. We knead in flour until stiff. Come on! <laughs> Roll to balls. And what are balls without nuts? Bake in a quick oven for about seven minutes. That'll be 400 degrees. Hello! Hmm, okay, I see you. It is a snapless, rotund ginger snap. It's like what ginger beer is to ginger ale, just in cookie form. Good cookie. A gooey butter cake from the 1930s. We start with a cup of flour. Third cup of butter. 
paper, dash of sugar. You have to look like breadcrumbs. I don't know what type of bread y'all eating. We then press this into a square pan and cast aside, which is dead people talk for put it away. Time for the filling. That's the perfect name for a baking themed only fan. First is three quarters cup butter. Cup and a quarter of sugar. Butter go butter. One egg. That thing's popping. Now we alternate between adding a cup of flour and because it's the 1930s, two thirds of a cup of evaporated milk. Flour. Ooh. Quarter cup corn syrup. Will be done by Christmas. Vanilla. Whoops. That's a lot of vanilla. I'm guessing the flavor profile is going to be cholesterol. Pounded sugar. 350 for a half hour. You know, some dishes aren't amazing, but they are innately comforting. And this is a prime example, like a hug on a plate. Wow. The Great Northern Nut Loaf from 49. Now I'm not sure what makes this loaf northern, I just picked it because it has the most nuts I've ever seen. And I've seen my fair share. We start with nuts, which is unusual. In my experience, that normally comes last. We need one pound of mixed pecans and filberts. Filberts are hazelnuts, and they are my second favorite nut. My favorite doesn't come from a plant. Now I need to flour the nuts with three quarters of a cup of flour. You know, I do prefer them deflowered. A pinch of salt. Only a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. This is not going to rise, which is always embarrassing. Into a separate bowl goes three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. Milla. Three eggies. Beat with a whisk. Never tried that before. Sounds painful. Finally, a half pound of dried figs. You know, fruit and nuts do go hand in hand. I would know. I'm both. Combine the two. <laughs> it's literally just nuts. 300 for 80 minutes. Done. Ooh. Mm. Whoa. It's a great taste. Nice and moist, but very crunchy. If you hate nuts, I can see you spitting it out. Not me. Ham and bananas hollandaise. Welcome to the 70s. Four bananas. Peeled. Whoopsie. Boiled ham. Now we need to individually wrap the bananas. This was still the Cold War after all. Fear of communist bananas was at an all-time high. Bake it. Seems logical. Ten minutes. Hollandaise. Oh boy. Eggy. Just the yolk. Water and lemon juice. <laughs> Very hot butter. Careful. Very slowly. Cayenne. My bananas are baked. The 70s. Sponsored by the color beige. Oh boy. Huh? Mm hmm? Sweet, it's meaty, it's salty, it's uncomfortably appetizing. A Hoover stew from the Great Depression. Now it stands to reason that this dish was named after the 31st president of the United States, a vacuum. This was the economical way to feed your family during a time where people were pinching pennies until Lincoln wept. Water! Salt! Fire! In goes a pound of macaroni. Now we slice a pound of hot dogs as thin as coins. Ah yes, brings back memories. <laughs> Time to drain the pasta. Into a large pot goes two pounds of stewed tomatoes, pound of canned corn and the juice. Add in the hot dogs and simmer for 10 minutes. Dylan, you say, did people not have spices in the Great Depression? No, they didn't. <laughs> Refer to depression. Mm. This is so much food. Mm. Yep. Is it bland? Yes. Is it bad? No. Especially when you consider that all of this cost me $6. Impressive. Ice cream cone cupcakes from 79. Now you'd think that ice cream cones are for ice cream, but nope. This is the 70s. We do what we want. We start with a half cup of vegetable oil, a cup of sugar, teaspoon of vanilla, <clears throat> and one egg. Then you whisk vigorously. For the dry ingredients, we have a cup and a half of flour, half cup of cocoa, mm. and a teaspoon of floof soda. Baking soda. Then we alternate adding our dry ingredients with a half cup of buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, you could always buy it. Mix. Mix. And finally, a half cup of hot water. Ooh. Oh boy. We fill these up about two thirds of the way and they need to have a flat bottom, like me. Get it! Whoa! 350 for about 30 minutes. Hello! For the buttercream, we just beat a half cup of soft butter, slowly adding a cup of powdered sugar, and some vanilla. Yes, you can make buttercream by hand. I do everything by hand. I'm very lonely. Ooh. Hmm. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It's just a really tasty, fun idea. I love it. An impossible pie from 1969. Some things are naturally impossible, like perpetual motion or happy AT&T customers. But apparently this pie makes itself. <laughs> First you get your blender. <laughs> it's good to be back. Then simply add a half cup of butter, cup of sugar, two cups of moo juice, oh God. four egg cup of shredded coconut, half a cup of flour, and some dinner. Now we blend, cause why not? Let's hope this doesn't kill the blender. <laughs> and that's it. Mm -hmm. While this bakes, it apparently forms its own crust and layers. I have my doubts. 350 for an hour. Done! <laughs> Enough! Cool. And then to the fridge. Hello. <laughs> it 
Impossible! It did it. Formed its own pie. Mmm. Coconut and vanilla. How did that work? You crazy old people. Leftover bread pancakes from 1947. Now I love pancakes, so a homemade recipe which is easy, needs no flour, and lets you use up some stale bread seems too good to be true. Let's see if it is. We start with seven or eight slices of stale bread. Mm. Just tear it up and put it in a bowl. Adding to it three quarters of a cup of milk. Moo juice! Time to mash! <laughs> Next, a pinch of salt, two tablespoons of sugar. They recommend four if these are for kids. Can I be a kid, please? <laughs> Next is one teaspoon of floof powder, which is baking powder. I call it floof powder because it floofs. Finally, one egg. Beating thoroughly. A bit of oil. Fire! Then you just... Three minutes on each side on medium-high heat. Ooh. Ooh. Smell really good. They're so fluffy. It's the good pancakes. I'm not even gonna wait for my bread to go stale. I'm just, I'm just gonna make these. Magic beer bread from 84. Now most breads are risen by yeast. Those lovely little things that make your bread all fluffy and puffy like a cat in heat. But this recipe is a quick bread, something which doesn't have any yeast, but promises to taste like it does. We begin with a 12 ounce can or bottle of your choice of brew. Oh, this is my type of baking. Just make sure it's not cold. Then we just add three cups of flour. Oh, it's foamy. Three tablespoons of sugar. Three teaspoons of baking powder. Sloop. And finally, a good pinch of salt. Now we just go to town with our hands. Rings are coming off. That's how you knew you were in trouble. Oh, uh, hello. Get off. And into a greased loaf pan. Oh, flatten it out. And then this goes to a cold, unpreheated oven. Sacrilegious. Set the temperature to 350 and bake for about an hour. Is this the magic part? Do a trick. Woo, not exactly a pretty loaf of bread. Whoa! But it don't need to be pretty, because that's pretty darn good. The beer offers all that lovely sour taste that you'd expect from yeast. Wow. For a dead simple, easy, cheap bread, that is a winner. Magic cinnamon sticks from 63. So this recipe finds a good use for ready-made pie crust mix. But of course, you could use any leftover pie pastry you have, or make your own if you enjoy that type of low-level anxiety. One pie crust mix. And this one needs five tablespoons of cold water. Boop. You gotta mix it with your fingies. Done! <laughs> Roll this into a thin rectangle. Now we sprinkle some coarse sugar on both sides, pressing it in with your rolling pin. I like sugar. Get in! Now into three tablespoons of melted butter goes six teaspoons of simonium mix. And then on it goes. This is very satisfying. I like you. Fold this in half and cut into strips. They're so cute. Now twist and onto a baking sheet. We bake these at 350 for about 20 minutes. Oh, yes! Oh, I like a cookie. Mmm. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to eat all of these. Magic ice cream from the Great Depression. Now, in my personal experience, depression and ice cream are a match made in heaven, so I have high hopes for this. We begin with one package of raspberry jello. Going to assume we have the same size package. Though the last time I made that mistake, I ended up stunned and quite self-conscious. Half cup of boiling water. Ah! Cup of sugar! By the way, this is a no-churn ice cream, hence the magic. Three cups of moo juice! Vanilla! To the fridge! Whip a cup of cream. <laughs> so this took 40 minutes to stiffen up, which means it should see a doctor, but it also means we get to fold in the whipped cream. Be very gentle. Now, if it's not folding in properly like mine, you can go ahead and cry. Or put it back in the fridge. It's your call. Cover and freeze until firm. Good night. Good morning. Hmm. Heavens. It's surprisingly soft. Impressive, sir. A millionaire pie from 59. I tell you, I could never be a millionaire. I'd end up buying like 3,000 Pop-Tarts. Or ducks. I quite like ducks. To one and a half cups of graham cracker crumbs, we add a quarter cup of sugar. Half a cup of melted butter. So begins the graham cracker crust. Uniformities of utmost importance. Blind bake the shell at 375 for 15 minutes. Blind baking is when you put the shell in the oven with a... <laughs> One can of sweetened condensed milk. Pound of crushed pineapple. Drained, of course. Cup of sweetened coconut. How much sugar do you want in this? A jar of chopped maraschino cherries. A lot. Beep at me one more time! So sticky! How are they so red? In go the cherries and a quarter of the juice. Half cup of chopped pecans. Juice of a lemon. Yee! To top it off, in goes a tub of Cool Whip. Hope y'all know some dentists. Good night. Good morning. You are pink. Whoa, Nelly! Woo! I say, this is camp. I don't hate it. Over the top, outdated, mid-century camp.
Magic peanut butter cookies from 84. These are three ingredient cookies, which means I have some serious doubts. Because a normal cookie contains butter, milk, salt, baking powder, flour. This recipe just says no. We start with one cup of peanut butter. Mm. A half cup of sugar. Plus one egg. And that's it. <laughs> this is not how you make cookies. Just roll them out. Then cross them with a fork. There's no way. This is going to end up a melted tray of peanut butter. 350 for 10 minutes. No. Come on. How? You cheated. <laughs> These are brilliant. Melt in your mouth, brilliant. <laughs> Here I was thinking I knew how baking worked. It's not fair. A peanut butter pie from 1953. Now this pie is described as a chiffon. Now what does that mean? It means it was written by a white person. We start by adding a pack of gelatin to water. I told you. The yolks of two eggies. Quarter cup of sugar. Ooh. And water. Cook over a double boiler. We're getting bougie today. Hiya! Gelatin. Vigorous whisking. <sighs> Fridge. Half cup of peanut butter. Half cup of water. You're diluting peanut butter. To the gulag. Vanilla. Put this back in here. <laughs> Time to beat the egg whites. If I have to beat anything else in this recipe, I'm going to be charged with domestic violence. Quarter cup of sugar. <laughs> egg whites. Oh! Goddamn gravity. Fold. Back you go. Pastry. Nah. This better be good. Yes. Good night. Good morning. Finish with whipped cream. God damn it. It's beautiful. Sorry about that. Peppermint patties from 1946. Now I didn't know that one could make these at home. I thought it was a closely guarded industrial process. But apparently not. Take that, big peppermint. We start with one cup of sweetened condensed milk. In goes one and a half teaspoons of peppermint extract. Be very careful with this. The stuff's stronger than my desire to drop out of college. Slowly add five to five and a half cups of powdered sugar. Christmas time means sugar time. You can use a stand mixer. I'm just easily frightened by machinery. Do, 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 do. Done. Now you might need more or less powdered sugar. You're just looking for a workable dough. Parchment. More powdered sugar. <laughs> Hello, Dolly. <laughs> to the freezer. Now over a double boiler, we melt four cups of chocolate. Adding to it two teaspoons of shortening. Get off with the spoon. Fire. Then once your chocolate is melted and your patties are firm, you take a fork. And then, woo, it's a little bit messy. They don't stop. To the fridge. Mm. Woo, yes. Look at that. You can do that. Ten out of ten. How are these so perfect? Potato candy from the Great Depression. Just like my relationships, candy is inevitably unhealthy. So potato seems a peculiar addition. Peel and boil one russet. Ah! This recipe only has three ingredients, so I'm a bit scared. Your time has come. <laughs> Add eight to ten cups of powdered sugar. Cups? Cups? Eight is the low end. There shouldn't be eight to ten cups of anything. This is poundage of sugar. Um, the potatoes are gone. It's turned to liquid. Are you a sorcerer? So much powder. Reminds me of my summers in Colombia. We literally now have a dough which we're gonna roll out. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This potato. <laughs> Jar of peanut butter. <laughs> Every turn in this recipe has been a left. Come on. This feels familiar. To the fridge. Well. It's good. I'll be damned. Potato chip cookies from 76. Now sweet and salty things aren't anything new. You have classics like PB&J, chicken and waffles, fake friends, your in-laws. But this is crazy. One cup of butter, a cup and a quarter of sugar, cream. No, that would be very indecent. Butter go butter. Aren't you fluffy? Two eggy teaspoon vanilla. <laughs> Now's when we smash eight ounces of potato chips. Mm. Goodbye. Look who's fallen from grace. Shame. Two cups of flour. Three teaspoons of fluff powder. <laughs> now in goes half of the potato chips. And a cup of chocolate chips. Oh, that's crunchy. Chill time. We're gonna roll the dough in the potato chips. <laughs> You're insane. 15 minutes at 3.50. Hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the potatoes. A whole bag of potato chips. That's phenomenal. Wow. Potato donuts from the Great Depression. Now I say that disrespecting donuts should carry a life sentence, so let's see if we're going to jail today, huh? Peel and boil two russets. You know, a lot of things start with potatoes, french fries, hash browns, famine,
communism. Potatoes are finished when they're soft. Yes, I've noticed that with men too. <laughs> Once the potatoes are cool, we add a cup of buttermilk, pack of yeast, four teaspoons of baking powder, and a half teaspoon of soda. Half cup of melted butter. Don't kill the yeasty boys. They're working very hard. Four, eight, eight seven, them. Add enough flour to make a dough. Putting your faith in the wrong man. Sugar! Two cups! Told you not to trust me! Mm. This took about six and a half cups of flour. Now we let it rise for an hour. This is the first time we're deep frying. Mm. Nope. Mm. Cinnamon sugar. Oh! Mm. Best donut I've made. A pound cake from 1904. Pound cake is one of my favorite things to do, but I'm single, so it's been a while. It's called such because the traditional recipe is a pound each of butter, sugar, eggs, and flour. Nothing else. We start by beating the butter. <laughs> now we slowly cream in a pound of sugar. Oh boy! Now I'm beating and creaming by hand because as any man could tell you, that's how we all first learned. <laughs> Good heavens. How many eggs? Nine. We beat them in gradually. This is wild. And finally, the flour. <laughs> Fold into a bunt. We bake this in a moderately slow oven for 80 to 100 minutes. Hello. <laughs> nope. I really just JFK'd this cake. Man, that's wonderful. For something that doesn't have any flavoring at all, you would not believe it. With a texture like nothing else. It's very good. But we don't talk about this. Rice bread from World War One. This recipe happens to be gluten-free. As if 1918 wasn't miserable enough. We begin with a half cup of white rice. Water! The rice is resigned to be overcooked. Why you gotta say it like that? It sounds like a court order. I hereby sentence you to be overcooked. Ah! Cup and a half of cornmeal. Two tablespoons of margarine. Then one and a half cups of milk. Scolded. You useless! Do you mean scalded with an A? He's like, nah fam, that ain't no typo. I want you to yell at your milk. Hot, 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 eggy! <laughs> well, the rice resigned, all right. It is no longer with us. One cup exactly. Four teaspoons of baking powder. Is this bread going to space? <laughs> Bake for a half hour in a hot oven. Yes, I know it's hot, you get It's an oven! 400 it is. Hello. Like a really smooth, fluffy cornbread. The rice does more than you think. Thank you. Scotcheroos from 1965. So Rice Krispie Treats were invented all the way back in 1939 at the Kellogg's Company in Battle Creek, Michigan, and have since become the most dominant Rice Krispie confection. But 26 years later, they came up with these, a lesser known variant, which we are going to try today. In a big old pan, we're gonna need a cup of corn syrup, <laughs> followed by a cup of sugar. Excessive. Fire! Bring this to a boil to create a cavity-inducing syrup. Charming. Next, we remove from heat and add in a cup of peanut butter. <laughs> Mix. Then in goes five cups of Rice Krispies. You know, I've never understood America's obsession with breakfast cereals. Whatever was wrong starting your middle school mornings crying over a sad bowl of oatmeal. That was character building. Good old liquid cardboard. Anyway, this is rather dense. In this goes to a 13 by 9. Just cooperate. While that's cooling, we melt a cup of butterscotch chips and a cup of chalky chips over a double boiler. Melt, you get. Just spread it on and cool completely. Yes. Mmm. <laughs> These are good. These are better than Rice Krispie Treats. Survival bread from 1972. This bread is claimed to last upwards of seven years, or roughly the amount of time it's taken me to get my bachelor's degree. We start with a cup of sugar. Quarter cup of honey. The same of water. Then we bring to a boil with a pack of lemon jello. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that jello is inevitable. Oh, we love jello. Shut up. Fire! For the dry ingredients, we need two and a half cups of powdered milk. Two cups of oats. <laughs> oh, stop it! How am I gonna survive the apocalypse if I can't survive oats? Once whatever this is has boiled, you add it to the dry. Oh, shoot! Fit. Add a bit of water if we need to. Sweetie, this needs a lot of things, but water isn't one of them. Then we mold it into a brick. <laughs> so thick. Thirty minutes, three fifty. Huh. This is an enigma. It is quite dry, but not in a bad way, like a biscotti. I would take this camping. Tang cookies from 1969. Hey! Now this recipe is from Nebraska. Nebraska, are you okay? We begin with three quarters of a cup of tang. Might I remind you that this is a cookie with drink mix. Mm-hmm. Followed by a half cup of sugar. Any dentists out there? Two eggs. And two thirds of a cup of vegetable oil. That's a choice. Whisk. Gee, this uh, sure is vibrant. Nebraska! Now the dry ingredients are dry. Two cups of flour. Two teaspoons of floof powder. Boop. And a half teaspoon of salt. I expected Nebraskans to be saltier since they live in Nebraska. Combine. Mix. Boop. 
350 for about 12 to 15 minutes. I know, I know! Oh, I know! Hmm. Nebraska. They are quirky, but not bad. It's tangy. I would bake them a little less, though, like 10 to 12 minutes. But thank you, Nebraska. A tomato soup cake from 1950. Ah! What's the difference between margarine and shortening? The amount of time spent on the toilet. You need reinforcements. Sugar in a carton. <laughs> Creamy. Sift your flour three times. Lady, your cake has tomato soup in it. This is the least of your worries. Clove, cinnamon, and nutmeg. With the soup. Can't hide from me. I wish you could. Bloop. Simming him? No, no, no. 911, what's your emergency? Yeah, that lady Carol is at the barbecue again. Careful not to overmix. Sorry, I'm just trying to kill it. It smells like a hospital. Tomato spice. If pumpkin spice got hit by a bus. At least it's not moving. Icing. Ah. Shut up. <laughs> Doesn't taste like tomato. Tastes like chocolate. A Valentine's cream pie from 59. Mm-hmm. Now I can't think of anything better for Valentine's Day than a good old-fashioned cream pie. And this one features the maraschino cherry pastry. Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. For the pie pan, we're going to want a nine inch. I know I do too. If you've got one, don't just force it in. Be gentle. Now whether or not to edge is up to you. Some people aren't that patient. Blind bake at 425 for 15 minutes. Mm. This finished a bit early. Happens to the best of us. Into a saucepan goes a cup of sugar. Quarter cup cornstarch. Two eggies. Two cups of moo juice. Quarter cup of cherry juice. Hopefully it'll be pink. Bring this to a boil and stir constantly. Fire! If your hand gets tired, just keep going. I'm single, so I'm used to it. Once it's thickened, we remove from heat and add in a half cup of chopped cherries. In you go. To the fridge. Next, a cup of cream whipped. Some people are into that. <laughs> Bloop. Now we get to top. That's always fun. Mmm, mmm, I like that. Very sweet, but I like it. Velveeta fudge from 1984. There are a lot of ways to make fudge, most of which aren't as problematic as this, but then again, who are we to fault the 80s? Start with a cup of butter in a heavy pan. I reckon this is a heavy pan. Heavy with the burden of whatever crime it is I'm going to commit. We melt that down with a half <laughs> half pound of Velveeta. Neither scientist nor scholar knows precisely what Velveeta is. It is the occult. The great unknown. Fire! Well, this is already critically disturbing. In goes half a cup of cocoa powder. <laughs> it's cheesy. <laughs> Next up is two pounds of powdered sugar. Hold on. <laughs> yes, I see. It's the whole bag. Now, I'm no mathematician, but I'm not sure how this whole bag's gonna fit in here, Mildred. Her name is Mildred. This is not gonna work. It's not. Oh, no way. Oh, it's alive. <laughs> Finally, you take off the heat and add in some nina. Oh, it's like a tumor. <laughs> to the fridge. Ooh. <laughs> Man, that's a good fudge. A wacky cake from the Great Depression. So the stock market's crashed and we can't afford any butter, eggs, or milk. But little Johnny still wants a cake for his birthday. Selfish brat. Directly into a cake pan goes a cup and a half of flour. A teaspoon of floof soda. Bloop. One of the reasons this is called a wacky cake is because you don't need a bowl. Though living in the Depression, I think everyone needed a bowl. A cup of sugar. A third of a cup of cuckoo. Then we just mix it with a fork. <laughs> Now we make three wells. I feel like a gardener. Do you guys remember Farmville? Those were the days. Into one well goes two tablespoons of vinegar. Next, a third of a cup of oil. Nilla. And finally, a whole cup of water. Just mix it in the pan. Bake this at 350 for about a half hour. Ooh, it's a cake. Cool completely in the pan. For the frosting, we need a cup of powdered sugar. Two tablespoons of cuckoo. And slowly add water until thick. Beautiful. What? How did that not stick? Are you a witch? <laughs> this! Yes! That's a darn good cake.